Thank you all so much for coming to Video Studios. We could not be. What are you doing here, Oculus? This isn't Club Oculus. Oh crap! Let's party. Okay, we can just keep partying. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Welcome. Oh my goodness, we cannot be more excited to be welcoming Juliet. Welcome, Juliet. <laughs> He literally Hello. ducks out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. If you are not a fan of Judy Ed's work, then you haven't been to her world. My gracious, I'm so excited. I mean, there's a little bit of horror. There's a little bit of fun. The latest Candy Kingdom. We just yes. got done checking that out. Amazing. Well, I started out doing dark rides. Um, I grew up in a family where uh, they built carnival rides for their business. So I grew up around going to different carnivals and seeing different things being put together. And that really fascinated me. That is awesome. Yeah. You know, I think Oculus actually, he ducked out of here, but he was the first to take me to your worlds. And it was like you were on a ride and it was really unique. It was such a cool experience to get on a ride and then go around and just see the sights. That was so cool. And so did you, you find that relatively easy to get started in Horizon doing that? Or like, what was the learning curve for you? The main thing is meeting other people who are creators like if i don't know something there's somebody out here that knows something and would be able to help me yeah. and i'm a person that learns by um experience if i see you do something then i i can pick that up and i'll remember that throughout the whole entire build process. Candy Kingdom is a really good example of this and it's very inspired by Candyland and anyone who's been there will notice that mm -hmm. right off the bat. What would you say got you started collaborating with others and did you initially envision it maybe with less scripting or how did that kind of morph and expand until it got to where we see it today? Um, when I first started out, I didn't realize how many different versions of Candyland there, there are. There's some mm. with dice, some with a spinner, and then you had the cards. Hmm. Well, I needed to be able to have a system that probably would not break as easy, yeah. but still had the feel that, you know, I can get the randomness. What I was really worried about was the randomness of the colors. And Sandwich was nice enough to step up and help me come up with a system where we can move the pawns and have the colors because the initial design was the player was supposed to be the pawn and you uh, would move based on the color yeah but it just felt better seeing your actual piece move around if kids played it they're not going to want to sit still on a square <laughs> i so didn't want to sit still on a square systems. i was jumping on gummy bears <laughs> i was trying to get on top of the buildings yes. oh my gosh it was a lot of fun that was great yeah, and huge shout out to Dan Glock, who's in the audience. He did mm -hmm. the voiceovers, right? Yeah, those were fun. Those are so great. Uh, he did 90% of the voices in there. And some great music, too. So that's why there's all these uh, movements and audio cues, because there's something that people can walk up and touch yeah. and trigger and different things. And if you have friends that don't want to play but still want to interact with you, there is a a space pad up above the board where you can sit on a hostess cupcake and eat ice cream. <laughs> yeah, I like awesome. that. You got a good view of the whole board. You know, I found really interesting about this world specifically is how when we walked in, or at least when I walked in the first time, I never realized mm -hmm. I was in a like a living room. It wasn't until the second time when I started realizing, oh, wow, like this is we're on the board. <laughs> like that was really unique how you really took scale into consideration. Was that part of the original design or how did you morph and start building? No, that? I was just going to leave it open like the studio. It was just yeah. going to be like a sky. And I thought, well, that don't make sense because you're on a board game. There needs to be something that shows, hey, this scale mm. is, is for sure different. Yeah. So that's when I threw up the walls and made the uh, rest of the table and everything. I was like, we have to show that you are actually on the board game itself. That's so awesome. Yeah. What was the first thing you did in Horizon after like doing the tutorial? Uh, the first thing I did, believe it or not, was a skating rink. Oh, okay. Because I had never seen one in here at that point. And that was the first thing I built. And that was when I was starting to experiment with different things like animation and how I wanted the heads to, to look. 
Yeah. Uh, so that was the scariest people looking people I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when they had the women's event, they ended up featuring it. And I hadn't touched the world in forever because, you know, first world, you never really yeah. go back to it. <laughs> That's funny. And I was like, oh, no, it's featured. So I literally <laughs> scrambled within 15, 20 minutes to try to update the look of the characters the best oh. I could and try to fix some things. So Yeah, that's so fun. Merck's Mountain was one of the very first worlds he built, and it was also featured. And so he was telling oh, yes. me about how there was uh, some really interesting um, original design choices in there. <laughs> and needing to update that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I actually unpublished it because it was so unplayable when I first published it. And that's because, like, you know this for, for I know from your mm -hmm. uh, Fazbear's ride, the in-game, like, when you're building, it's different to a published state, right? Oh, so, for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's a little tricky. You got to have a little experience on that to know. <laughs> what you're doing yeah so what was your first game this is actually my first game the candy land uh, up until now i have only done rides and like hangout areas i haven't attempted anything on such a big scale like this what inspired you to make this fabulous world of yours for um candy land uh, outside of the headset i actually do collect board games i have probably over 40 and i'm like wow it would be awesome if we could have that on a vr scale oh yeah because i, I haven't seen anything where, where you have to move pieces so i was like what is the simplest thing that could be built and scripted because there's so much heavy mechanics in board games i went and made a list of like simple things that could easily be imported in that's, that's awesome. so smart yeah, like really how you did all the work outside of Horizon and how you like, I mean, anything can be made into a game, but it's what can be simplified down into a Horizon sense that still makes it mm -hmm. fun, but yeah. it's not overthinking it, right? I like taking mm -hmm. things from the real That's world, amazing. like a board game, and then taking that idea of it and making it so much different. Like a board game is normally this thing you're looking over and looking down upon. But now in your right. world, we can actually go in, we can engage, we can walk into the houses even and like walk around the entire board, hear them singing so much more engagement and just like blowing it out exactly. of proportion from what it originally was. And so for me, sometimes I'll go to like the, uh, the used store, what do they call it? Like Goodwill. And I'll just be looking through their board games and their card games just for inspiration or even some of the kids toys. I actually saw uh, the alligator one in there. I forgot who did that world, but that was an awesome world. Yes. Alligator Tintus, someone built in here in Horizon. Solo. Yeah. Solo, Warlock yeah. and Solo did a great job with that. But, but it's like mm -hmm. it's like a two-year-old kid's game. But it, when you bring it into Horizon, now it's an adult game, <laughs> right? Like it's suddenly it's fun a, for it's everybody. It's a new experience. Exactly. So I just love that. I like what you said when we went into Candyland too. You're like... It might be, it's really cute, but it also might frighten you. Like, you know, and you're like, <laughs> you, you don't, you want people to have both. Like you want to scare people Those and you want people to be like, oh, it's so cute. But oh my gosh, why is that clown looking in the window? Oh my God. <laughs> Judiet, I'm always super impressed by your worlds. And as I witness all the incredible creators, I always think that there's part of them within their game. I'm curious, mm -hmm. in Candyland, do you have any NPC non-player characters like Queen Frostine or Mama Ginger Tree that are, um, or areas in Candyland that especially resonate with um, being a reflection of you? Oh, that is a very good question. Um, the one Never character, believe Queen it or Frosty. not, that I keep, I keep going back to um, the version I used. Her name is called Grandma Nut because she <laughs> oh, lives yeah. in the peanut brittle house and she grows peanuts. Um, I resonate with her not due to her age, but her love of peanuts. Uh, because if you look in my house, you'll find bags of peanuts stashed everywhere. 
So I always go back <laughs> to uh, grab my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Your Fazbear's ride, it was looking at it was, I remember you'd posted about it on Facebook, the page about wanting to build it. And you had like constructed it and put it together a team and had it done within, was it two weeks? Do you want to talk about that? I believe two oh. weeks. My scripting knowledge is very basic. Um, I can do certain things, but when it comes to, like, when one scene ends, another one picks up, I don't know how to time those or get those timed. And that was very important with animation, especially mm. when you had, there's so many triggers. I wish I could take everyone here <laughs> to the editing version of that. It's covered in green squares because yeah. there's so many triggers and audio cubes everywhere. It's insane. But I wouldn't have been able to do it without a team because there was just so much going on. I was surprised we were able to get it done under uh, 99%. And we we got very close on, on that ride. Question for you yeah. with regards to kind of like your team. You know, we all I hear a lot that collaboration is key. But I'm curious how for you and your experience, let's say specifically with either Candy Kingdom or Fast Bears World, um, what was like the team structure and organization and how did you guys kind of manage and work together to create these worlds? Yeah, I had some issues with Fazbear where let's say I give you things to do uh, that is a part of the vision for the scene. Well, you might get some people that want to do other people's stuff as well. So you got to come together and decide, hey, we have to work together. This is my animatronic you have your animatronic and you have your animatronic and it's just getting people to work together yeah. uh, and this is something i've seen other builders have issues with as well and timing because my time zone is different than your time zone yeah and so getting everybody together uh was an issue mm-hmm uh, this this time it wasn't that bad because it was just me, Sandwich, and Dan, and then Mark came in later to help me set up the at the last part of it. So getting together for this time wasn't that hard. But if you're thinking about building your own world with a team, make sure that everybody has a set list of what they're wanting to do. Yeah. And everybody's able to get together or at least have like some groups I'm in has private message on Facebook, private groups on Facebook so that they can meet outside of Horizon and give pictures and notes and things like that. That's a good um, suggestion as well. Do you have any other rides that you're currently working on? The one I'm working with you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have. Uh, it's been forever on the back burner because Horizon comes out with these wonderful glitches every yeah. update. <laughs> uh, the last glitch I had, you couldn't get into the world unless you made a duplicate. Well, two duplicates later, <laughs> I'm finally having to get back in there and work on it. I think I have four houses left, but it's a Universal Studios style tram ride where you Ooh. ride in a tram and you can see old, older uh, classic television homes. Oh, that's awesome. That sounds really so cool. That one's, yeah. that's the ride I'm working on. And I'm helping IROC, uh, who's in the audience. Uh, I'm doing Pirates of the Caribbean. And that is the oh. number one ride I'm currently working on right now. Yeah. And that's based on, I think, one of the newest current versions with animatronics and oh, that's so as awesome. much of the Disney audio I can get. So that's really yeah. awesome. A really good team helping me with that as well. I don't remember who it was. If it was you, you got to let me know. But someone was asking four months ago, I think it was, about building It's a Small World. I sent them the video file I'd recorded yes. of the entire Small World. Was that you? <laughs> well, no, I saw that <laughs> on uh, the Facebook post. And I actually responded, hey, if you're interested, message me. But I never got a message. So I'm not oh. sure if that's person still working on it <laughs> if they are like, hey, that'd be are, really you, cool. are you doing the ride? I, I would like to <laughs> be involved 
Yeah, I think rides are actually a lot more fun than people realize. There's so much to see and then it feels like you just constantly have to keep up with mm-hmm. it. But like, it's great. I was in uh, your Fazbear's ride um, probably when I first came into uh, Horizon is one of the first things that I had seen. And uh, I was just so amazed by the details of the characters. But one of the things, and I think it's kind of a nerd thing when you're building stuff, is to see the tables that you made and the tablecloths and how simple those folds are on the corners. But like, it was like, it totally geeked me out looking at the table. And and I that was like one of my favorite parts of the whole thing. And I think you just, the details you did such a great job on. So I just wanted to, you know, mention that to you. So good job on that. Oh, thank you. That's one thing yes. that really bugs me with building is if you're making a bed or a table that's like a cheap way of doing it just having a square you got to have something there and unfortunately they don't give you a lot of shapes yet in yeah. horizon i was like well let's just see if we can create folds to kind of help with that so that's awesome that's really helped a lot yeah if you haven't seen it i remember i was gushing over her tables i was like the characters are great but like these cl- these tablecloths like what <laughs> <laughs> judy i want to say i met you through facebook it was literally seeing your posts about your faz buyers place coming up and a communication outside of horizons is what you and i got involved in it was mm-hmm. you know we were facebook tagging for a while going to going to faz bears with merch scared my pants off you succeeded <laughs> you did exactly what you were looking to do and having that dedicated selfie spot where I could take a picture and then post it to right. social media to say, check it out. I was there. That blew my mind. The whole social media aspect of it all was there. And I just wanted to give you that. Uh, that was, you know, that's amazing. You know, that's what got me, you know, as active as I am on all of the different, you know, Facebook Horizon, uh, Horizon Crew Meters, all the different groups, you know, just trying to be a part of, even if I can't physically be in VR. And, uh, you know, I just want you to give you credit to that because you were one of the first, and you know, and Carlos, and then, you know, you see all these posts that keep reoccurring. And I just want to say I love your work and keep it up, really. (laughs) So if if your rides continue to be popular, do you think it's possible that, like, creating stuff in Horizon might enable you to – would you – could you ever imagine yourself actually helping to design a real amusement park ride? And, and could you picture that happening? And what if they did? What if Disney came to you tomorrow and was like, we came in and we saw one of your eyes. We want you to collaborate. Would you do it? That's a good question. Because first I would tell Disney, I'm honored. But I would really <laughs> like to get my husband into Disney <laughs> uh, for the whole voice thing. But um, it would be very awesome to be able to design and do my own rides. And I, I always told Dan, I was like, if we win the lottery... I want a place with enough land that I could at least do a Halloween ride or something every year and just open it up for the neighbors. I would like to be able to make my own rides. So if I was ever given the option to do that, I would like to be able to do that because I love designing rides. Um, One of our dreams is to have our own theater for musicals and stuff i would i would love to do stage design because i love designing sets and props and things so i would like to see that in the future as a goal has your experience of testing and designing these types of things in in horizon how has that changed or influenced the way you might like think about rides like you can make anything you want in here so so it must have really increased what you think about as far as ride design? Oh, uh, for sure. Um, I focused more on lighting, how lighting has really helped. Um, There's different aspects of designing, like what colors would look good so that, you know, if you're wearing a blue or the character's wearing blue, you don't want too much blue in the background, things like that. So definitely looking at how to make any design better without um, going against itself visually. I think there's something really quite remarkable about what we can do in Horizon as it relates to the real world. And I think one of the most remarkable examples of this and like just is think of Waffle Copters. He told me that before he started building Mm -hmm. escape rooms in Horizon, he was thinking about building them in the real world by hand with like tools. And then he came in like now he does it inside of here. And so if you think about how amazing that experience has been for him and how incredible his worlds are, if you've been to any of Wafflecopter's worlds, you know they're they're just 
mind blowing and hard to solve. But would you ever really want to go back to the real world? You know, to to your point, we do. You, maybe if you had the funding of Disney and their support yeah. to say, yeah, we can make anything you can dream possible. But imagine an escape room like Waffles trying to make that possible inside of the real world to be so difficult. I mean, you literally need the funding of Disney to pull it off. And so that's what I just, you know, I love mm-hmm. about here is the impossible becomes possible. And more than that, like we can learn and develop and just have a ton of fun. And I think in the future, you know, maybe it's not necessarily a real world game, but actually a virtual game. Maybe Disney's like, hey, we love your work. Can you help us design the virtual version of that right. ride? Right. Like that would be, I, I mean, 10 out of 10, really cool. Here's something that's going to be mentioned. Fazbear's Family Opera, things like that is IP. Mm. And I know they're not that strict with ip but if you notice on all my worlds and if you do a world with ip definitely add a disclaimer don't remember anything from business law other than fan art usually Mm. they won't touch you if you have labeled on your world sorry i do not own the rights to this such and such owns the rights this is made for fan art they usually will not touch you that's why i always do a disclaimer that is a That's really good. great point to close us out with. And just, you know, very clearly to state that Horizon does not allow IP content. It's small enough right now that they're overlooking it. But if you remake something like Candy Kingdom is similar to Candyland, but it is not Candyland, great job. You you know, and then there's another one like Minefield mm-hmm. is not Minesweeper. It's, it's Minefield. And so I think remember to make it your own a little bit especially for being here in horizon and, and do not use music whatever you do right. don't don't steal the music uh that could definitely lead you to some bad trouble Juliet, i can't wait to crush it at candy tonight so <laughs> yay yeah congratulations on your work you can secure yourself through saying that your recreations mm-hmm. are part of the fair use act of 1976 i'm working to support all of you if you ever have a problem come to me i'm part of a team that decides that that is so awesome thank you so much for sharing and yeah i think uh, just for this video's purpose this is not legal advice you know uh, but uh <laughs> we do really like we we love the content everybody's creating and i wouldn't want to tell anybody not to do something but i i mm-hmm. believe there's facebook is trying their best not to get in trouble as creators you probably won't you're not right. trying to monetize it but uh yeah it is a very touchy subject but with that i just want to say thank you so much judy for joining us on the yeah, show today and showing off your worlds in a few short moments we're going to go check out candy kingdom so amazing and we will see you all in the yes, next one wait. bye bye <laughs> <laughs>